We're going to continue on in our series entitled, The Stronger Man. Mark chapter 3, verse 27, says, No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder, which is seize or take, his goods, unless he first binds the strong man, and then he will plunder his house. Father God, we thank you for your anointing being on this message tonight, that every one of your sons and daughters here this evening will receive from you, will receive the revelation that we need individually, cause me to say exactly what you want to say, Lord. I'm listening to your Holy Spirit. And Lord, we're going to listen to the voice within the voice. Holy Spirit, sir, speak to all the fathers, sons, and daughters here tonight to get exactly what He has for them. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. Amen. In this series, we found out that the strong man is the devil. And the house is the earth, the world. The goods are all the blessings that he stole from Adam and Eve. The goods included man's dominion to reign on earth. In Genesis 1.26... God said, let us make man. I want to stop right now on that. When you see in the first chapter of the Bible, God said, let us make man. There's nobody around except God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So don't think Jesus started in... First chapter of Matthew. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> he's, he's been around. He looked at the Father in, in John 17, I believe, and said, uh, Thank you for giving me the glory that I had with you before the world was. And we're just going back to Genesis 1 on this one. He said, Let us make man in our image. The Father, Son, Holy Spirit said, let's give man our identity. Love that. Let's give man our identity. Let's make man in our image and after our likeness. They looked at each other and they said, why don't we make them just like us? Healthy, prosperous, full of peace, joy, contentment, happiness, everything... Going good and going right. Kind of like heaven. Praise the Lord. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion. Dominion is giving man power and authority to reign. Over what? Over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. He said in, in Psalms 1, uh, 15, 16, he said, the word said, the heavens, yea, the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he's given to the children of men. We are supposed to be reigning. Amen. Man had it all, didn't he? Yes. He had heaven on earth, but man lost it all. Well, God didn't leave it that way. God wants man to get it all back. Well, how's he going to do that? Look at verse 27 again. No one can enter a strong man's house and take his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then he can take the house. How are we going to get it back? By first binding the strong man. And second, by taking the goods back. So who can bind the strong man? 
the stronger man. His name is Jesus Christ. He is the stronger man. He's the only stronger man. In Colossians 2.10 it says, We are completing Him who is the head of all principalities and powers. He's the head of all rule and authority. What does that mean? He reigns over principalities, powers, rule, and authority. He reigns over everything. Anybody that's trying to control anything, He's over them. Glory be to God. Why? He's a stronger man. So how did Jesus bind the devil? With His righteous presence. By the time this series is done, if you don't already have a revelation of this, you will have it. 1 John 2, 1 said that Jesus Christ is the righteous one. He's the one and only righteous one. How did Adam loose the devil with his sin? It's how the devil became the strong man. That's how the devil became the little G God of this world, 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. That's how this world, the whole world right now, lies in wickedness, lies in the hands of the evil one, 1 John 5.19. How was the devil loose? By Adam's sin. Or you could say, by Adam's unrighteousness. So how's the devil bound? By Jesus' righteousness. Realize Adam and Jesus were the only two representative men. That's why this is so big. When Adam messed up, the devil was loosed. When Jesus showed up, the devil was messed up. Praise the Lord. Colossians 2.10 again, it says, we are complete in Him. If we're complete in Him, we're just like Him, aren't we? We're just like Him. And one of my favorite verses, you know I got a bunch of them, but one of my favorite verses is 1 John 4.17. As He is, so are we. Where? Not in the sweet by and by? In this world. Not just church only. Monday morning at 8 at work. As He is, so are we in this world. Well, how is He? Well, He's righteous, isn't He? He's righteous and He's reigning. He's doing well right now. You know, we look at that and just like you did and just like I did, we smile. But as He is... So are we in this world. Now, that statement can go two ways. You can get excited and then you get spitting mad because you ain't there yet. <laughs> are you following me? I get usually spitting mad. I'm supposed to be living like Jesus is living right now. He's at the right hand of the Father, He's enjoying glory. Well, I should be too, right? Amen. He's experiencing heaven. Well, I should be too, right? Amen. He said to pray, my kingdom come, I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He even told us that before he went up. I should be. Yeah. So you see, you can get excited, but you, you really get mad too. Mm-hmm. I got more room for the kingdom of heaven to manifest in my life. Psalms 91.16 says, With long life He'll satisfy me and show me His salvation. I haven't seen nowhere near the amount of salvation I want to see down here. Amen. Nowhere near. Salvation is an all-inclusive word for everything that Jesus did on the cross. Not only taking your sins, but taking your sickness, your disease, your lack, your poverty, your depression, your discouragement, yeah. your stress, your worry. He took it all, didn't he? Yes. <clears throat> took it all. 
and He wants us to see His salvation. See, that can get you real happy or get you real spitting mad too. Spitting mad. mad, amen. Amen. He's righteous and reigning what we are too. How? By identifying with Him. That's how. Well, He's the stronger man, right? But He's up there, right? So who's the stronger man now in this world? You and me. You and me. We're the stronger man. Well, I thought there was only one and one and only one righteous. Yes. Outside of Jesus, you're just a sinner. And you can't do nothing. You're useless. But glory be to God. We're not going to ever get outside of Jesus. We're living in Jesus. Jesus living in us. But I'm still a sinner. No, you're not. You're a saint. Amen. Well, I still sin. Being a sinner and still sin is two different things. Yeah. You're a saint, and when you sin, you're going to go to God and repent, and you're a saint getting forgiveness again. Amen. We're saints. We're righteous. Amen. Well, I've never heard this kind of stuff before. That's why you need to hear it more and more and more. You need to hear it throughout the week. You need to go to, the, to YouTube and turn it on and listen to it and listen to it. Because the church world as a whole has beat up the body of Christ and told them there's no good sorry sinners. We're not. Amen. He took the, the sin on the cross. Amen. He made us a saint. Romans 1.7 calls us a saint. 1 Corinthians 1.2 calls us a saint. Revelation 1.6 calls us a king and a priest. Wow, i never heard that before. Well, maybe you've never heard the Bible preached. And you know, take that how you like, too. I'm giving you chapter and verse. Amen. You'll get a bunch more, too. This one's going to win the award on the most verses I've ever spoken one night. <laughs> uh, we're the stronger man now. We don't have to put up with that devil. At all. Turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. If Jesus is righteous and reigning, that means we are too. Amen? Amen. Romans chapter 5, verse 17, it says, For if by one man's offense... Death reigned by one. That's what we've been talking about. When Adam sinned, he let death reign. Much more, those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. The sin of Adam caused death to reign in this world. And it is everywhere. If you back up to verse 12, it says, For by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin, and death passed upon all men, for all have sin. You hear all that? It's everywhere. Death is everywhere because of Adam. Death is separation from God. We're not talking about just physically dying. That would, be the, that would be the end of it on this planet. That's not what we're talking about. Sickness and disease is the nature of death. Not being able to pay your bills is the nature of death. Waking up one morning and you're down, depressed, and discouraged, and you don't know why, that's the devil. It's the nature of death. Well, I just got up this morning feeling blue. Get out of it. Amen. Why do I do that? You've got to resist the devil, sweetheart. You don't say, Mr. Devil, will you please leave? Please leave, Mr. Devil. You're really bothering me. You're about to make me cry, Mr. Devil. Please leave. 
Let me help you with something. If you want the devil to go, he only moves by aggression. Come on now. Are you hearing me? He only listens to you displaying aggression to him. From the days of John the Baptist to now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And the violent take it by force. Please, Mr. Devil, would you leave because you're making me feel bad is not violent enough. (laughs) See, when you really believe this stuff, you're going to step up your aggression. I'm not taking it, devil. I'm a son of God. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm a saint in Christ walking this planet right now. You have nothing on me. You have nothing in me. Just like Jesus said, the devil comes, he has nothing in me. Well, you can come, devil, but you got nothing in me. How can you say that? Because I'm in Christ. Amen. Good word right there. Death is separation from God. Death is separation from the goods He gave you. Death is the works of the devil and all its many facets. Well, 1 John 3, 8 says, For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that He might destroy the works of the devil. Well, Jesus let us know how that turned out. In John nineteen thirty, He hung on the cross. And on the cross... He said, it is finished. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. Man's redemption is a done deal. Man's forgiveness is a done deal. Sin's gone. Righteousness has come. The devil's defeated. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. And then he gave us all the power and the authority to reign in life over the devil that doesn't believe it's a done deal. Luke 10, 19 says, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing by any means shall hurt you. Behold, look, see, be aware of, I give you power and authority. That's the same word. To tread on. To reign over. Serpents and scorpions. That's evil. What else is evil? Sickness and disease. What else is evil? Lack and poverty. What else is evil? Stress and worry. You reign over that mess. Don't let it reign over you. You tread on that mess. Don't let that mess tread on you. Amen? Well, but just sometimes I get caught in it. Get out! Appreciate that amen, Jane. <laughs> Get out of it. Well, it's, it's, it seems like it's so hard. you got to fight. 1 Timothy 6.12 didn't say walk the cakewalk of faith. Did it say that? If you got a Bible like that, get a better one. <laughs> get a real one, Dave said. Fight the good fight of faith. you got to fight. There's, there's no cake walking in that. <laughs> Somebody's going to be treading on somebody. <laughs> so it's up to you if you want to see the devil's boots or are you going to show them your boots. Come on now. There you go. It's only up to you. Verse 17 again, For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more those who receive the abundance of grace. Well, back back that up. Much more. Don't you like those words? Don't you like those? Much more. That is telling us we're to reign in life in Christ. Much more then death has ever reigned over us. People say, oh, I'll be glad when Jesus comes. Oh, come quickly, Lord Jesus. One glad day when this life is o'er. Hush. Why are you singing that all the time? You know why? 
Because you don't know about the good life that you can have down here. And you're ready to check out. There's seven and a half, eight billion people on the planet. And say there's, there's two billion saved. So there's, there's five and a half to six billion going to hell, and you're all right with that? So come quickly, Lord Jesus. That ain't right, is it? You on you. For by one man's offense, death reigned by one much more. I like this much more stuff. Much more they that receive the abundance of grace. What well, I got to do, Chris? Receive the abundance of grace. How? Say, I take it. Oh, it can't be that easy. That's your problem. That's your problem. Grace is real easy. If it's that difficult, you've been uh, uh, religiously pickled. You got to jump through all these hoops, cross all these T's and dot all these I's, and you know, crawl on your knees till till you feel like you've repented. No, 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 no. That's not God. That's man's religion. Amen. It is that easy. Receive the abundance of grace. Amen. And this is the one that most Christians out there choke on. And the gift of righteousness. Whoa, 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 whoa. No. You don't know my life. We're not looking at your life. Why don't you get off your life and get on His life? Amen? He's given you His gift of righteousness. He is righteousness. And when you accepted Him as Lord, you got righteousness. But you let confused preachers dumb you down to be being a sinner. You're not a sinner. You're a saint. You're the righteousness of God Amen. in Christ. Glory be to God. I done preach myself happy. <laughs> this is good stuff. Didn't, mind, didn't mean to spit, but hey, get down here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Much more then death has ever reigned in your life, Mark. The God kind of life should be there. Much more than death was there. That's, I can't even explain it right. It's so big. Who wants to go anywhere? Let's just have some heaven on earth. You don't have to die to go to heaven. Just focus on Jesus and get some now. Amen? Just get some now. Much more, they that receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign where? where? In, life. In life. By one, Jesus Christ. Much more than death has ever dominated us, life in Christ is to dominate us. That means I should be having a real good life down here. How good could it be? Heaven on earth. He told the children of Israel in Deuteronomy 11.21, He wanted you to have days of heaven on earth. They didn't get it either. He said in Matthew 6.10, Pray my kingdom come, I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. They didn't get it either. You go to the average church on our planet, they ain't getting it either. Well, reality, church is getting it. We're going to walk in heaven on earth. What's the biggest thing about heaven? Walking in His presence 24-7. If you're walking in His presence, you won't be sick. You won't be in lack. His presence brings the prosperity. His presence is heaven. Where is it? Revelation, I think, 21-23 that... This is paraphrased. There's, there's no need in heaven for the S-U-N because the S-O-N lights the place up. Wow. Well, that'd be nice to be in that presence. He's in you. Focus. Focus. When you want to get stressed, just focus instead. Amen? The stress will go away because when you focus on Him, He says, look to me. When you focus on Him, the stress is going to go. It'll go. 
He will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on Him, Isaiah 26, 3. Look to Him. Good word. Y'all get anything out of this so far? Praise God. So if you want this much more life in Christ down here, then just receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness and start reigning in life. Well, that sounds real easy. Well, in one aspect it is. In another aspect, don't think the devil is just going to run away from you when you decide it you're going to reign now. That's not going to do it. That's not going to do it. He don't want you reigning in life. If you're reigning in life, that's going to affect a lot of people that, he's, that he has the control over. He's going to try to knock you out of that. He don't want you reigning. He's not going to run away just because you decided to reign. But you know what? When you decide to run him off, he has to go. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 4.27 says, Neither give place to the devil. How come the devil has such control in my life? Ephesians 4.27 says, don't give place to him. Well, I know that says that, but how, how come he has such control in my... Earth the little confused Christian. <laughs> you gave him place. Are you saying it's my fault? Uh, no, but Ephesians 4.27 just said it. <laughs> no, 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 no. You ain't going you to get an attitude toward me. Get an attitude toward the Word. Not me, I'm just quoting word. That's all I'm quoting. That's all I'm quoting. Don't give place to the devil. What does that mean? It means if you don't run him off, you gave him place. Don't give him place, amen? <laughs> so how do I run him off? That's what reigning's all about. Turn to James chapter 4. James chapter 4. Boy, this is a good message right here. If y'all wasn't here, I'd have come here and preached it to myself. This is good. It's a good word. James chapter 4, verse 7. It says, Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil... And he will flee from you. One of the biggest fighting scriptures in the Bible. But look at this. I just saw this the other day. It says, submit yourself, therefore, to God. Well, if I'm submitting myself to God, I'm not submitting myself to me. Amen. That's all about identity. That's big. I'm not going to be identifying with the old me. I'm going to be identifying with the new me, the Christ in me and me in Christ when I submit myself to God. To submit to God is to identify with Christ. And to identify with Christ is to confess who Christ is in you and who you are in Christ. That's how you release your faith. Isaiah 54, 17, the last part of it, God says, your righteousness is of me. You don't have righteousness in you. You can't produce it. Man, in his fallen state, in his carnal state, can only produce unrighteousness. We cannot produce God's righteousness. That should liberate some of you folks in here right now. We're always trying to do the right thing. You can't. Quit trying. Start dying. Be identifying. And then the righteousness will be produced. He said in 2 Corinthians 5.21, the last part, he says, we're the righteousness of God in Christ. 
Now, you confess those verses and you identify with him. You confess it by saying, Christ in me is my righteousness. And I am the righteousness of God in Christ. When you do this, you just submitted yourself to God, didn't you? And you know what that made you at that moment? Absolutely. You know what else it made you? Absolutely. You know what else it made you? The stronger man. There you go. <laughs> I mean, all the answers are right. I was just trying to get to the, the name of the series, The Stronger Man. <laughs> I want you to declare who you are in Christ. Now you take back the goods. Remember our, our key verse. It said, no one can enter a strong man's house and take his goods unless he first bind the strong man. You got to bind him. How do you bind him? By you recognizing you're the stronger man. Are you, are you with me? Because Jesus' righteousness bound him. Well, you're the stronger man now. What are you saying? What I'm saying is you got to get a revelation of wherever you go, whatever you, room you walk in, the righteous presence of God just showed up. Amen. Amen. That's what I'm saying. Amen. Wherever you are, the devil's bound. Wherever you are. Do I have to bind them every place I go? No, no. You have to get the revelation of who you're in and who is in you. And who you're in is righteousness. Who's in you? Righteousness. What loose the devil? Sin. What binds them? Righteousness. Righteousness. Yes, we use the keys of the kingdom to bind and loose, but that's not what we're talking about right now. We're talking about binding the devil up everywhere we go. We should be walking in the, in the presence of God all the time, right? Right? Did Jesus take a break on walking in the presence of God? No. I think I'm going to walk in the presence of God right now, Father, right now. Thank you, thank you. Did He do that? <laughs> he was always in the presence of God. Acts 10.38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Why? For God was with Him. Was well, He with you? If He's not, follow me in this prayer of salvation. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You've got to realize your presence is righteous. Your presence is binding, shutting the devil down. Everywhere you go. Mm, that's good right there. Good stuff. Praise God. When you decide to resist the devil and reign over the devil, you'll take the goods back and he will flee from you. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil, he'll flee from you. He will flee from you and all his works. Amen? Realize this, who you identify with is who you're one with. Identity is oneness. It's likeness, it's union, unity. And who you're one with, you'll walk in. That's why Jesus confessed His identity with the Father when He walked as a man on earth. Oh, that's good. Jesus confessed who He was in the Father. Don't turn to these verses, but you can write them down. There's a bunch of them. I, I only picked uh, seven or eight of them. They're everywhere. But for sake of time, I'll, I'll just read them to you. Mark fourteen sixty one and 62, the high priest asked Jesus, saying to Him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? Jesus said, I am. I think he knew who he was in the Father. What do you think? 
In John 6.35, Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. You know he's confessing his faith. You know that, right? He's teaching us how to confess our faith. Amen? John 8.58, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. That about got him crucified right then. He's speaking, he's confessing who he is, isn't he? Wow. John 10, 14, he said, I'm the good shepherd. John 10, 30, he said, I and my father are one. Can't get any more unified than that, can you? He knew his identity, didn't he? John 10, 36, do you say of him whom the Father sanctified and sent into the world, you are blaspheming because I say I am the Son of God? That verse in John 10, 36 was full of Jesus confessing who he is. He confessed, I am the one that the Father sanctified, I am the one that the Father sent into the world, and I am the Son of God. John eleven twenty five talking to Martha, he said, Sweetheart, I'm the resurrection and the life. What's he doing? Speaking his identity. What does he want us to do? Speak our identity. <laughs> this is so good. John fourteen six, Jesus said, I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. That's Jesus releasing his faith wherever he went. Jesus knew that his identity with the Father was his power and authority in this world. Listen to me. John 5.19, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself. But what he sees the Father do, for what things soever he does, these also does the Son likewise. He clearly said, I'm not doing anything in me. Jesus came down from heaven as the Son of God, relinquished himself of his Son of God abilities and became a Son of Man to show the world how a Son of Man could walk on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. That's what he did. Praise the Lord. He was a real man. That's why that verse I quoted earlier. It said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Why did they put Nazareth in there? God wants you to realize that he was a man from a town. Just like you. Glory be to God. Same chapter, John 5.30. Jesus said, I, I can of myself do nothing. Oh, well, no, you, you read that wrong. No, Jesus said it. I'm not saying Jesus can't do anything. Jesus said he can't do anything. Why? Because he had to identify with the Father. He had to identify with the Father. Let the Father work through him. He said, I can on myself do nothing as I hear I judge. My judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Wow. Well, the same is true for us. We're to identify, everybody pay attention, we're to identify with the Son like the Son identified with the Father. Jesus only did what He did by letting the Father move through Him. We only do what we do by letting the Son move through us. He that believes on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. He wants us to do his works and greater works. Amen. Well, Brother Chris, how are we going to do greater works? Well, why don't we just start with how are we going to do the same? <laughs> why do we have to go to the greater right now? Yeah. Why don't we do the same first? Yeah. Well, how are we going to do that? Identify with him. Come on. That's what he's talking about. Identify with him. John 8, 12, Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. He, he just, he's into this confession stuff, ain't he? <laughs> into the confession stuff. I'm the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. He that follows me. When he said, follow me, he was saying, identify with me. The word follow there in the Greek 
It says it expresses union and likeness in going the same way. That's identity. The word follow in the Greek in John 8, 12, I'm the light of the world, he that follows me. It expresses union and likeness in going the same way. That's identity. When you confess who Christ is in you and who you are in Christ, the devil won't have a chance. Your identity in Christ is your weapon against anything the devil throws at you. If you're feeling weak, get out of you and get into Him. Amen. You can't tell me you're feeling weak in Him. Amen. If you're feeling condemned, get out of you and get in Him. There is therefore now no condemnation of them who are in Christ. Romans 8.1 Oh, why am I feeling so condemned, so guilty and all that? Because you're in you. Amen. Get in Him. So, Brother Chris, where do I find my identity in Christ? In the Word. You can find a lot of identity in the names of God. Y'all don't turn here, but here's a bunch of scriptures. In Genesis 22.14, we find Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. But we want to turn that into a confession. So who is Christ in you? The Lord your provider. And who are you in Christ? The prosperous one. In Exodus 15.26, we find Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. So who is Christ in you? The Lord your healer. And who are you in Christ? The healthy one. In Exodus 17, 15, we find Jehovah Nissi, the Lord, our banner, or our victory. So who is Christ in you? The Lord, your victory. So who are you in Christ? The victorious one. This is good stuff. In Judges 6, 24, we find Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, our peace. So who is Christ in you? The Lord, your peace. So who are you in Christ? The unshakable one. The stress-free one. The worry-free one. I like unshakable. In Psalms 23, 1, we find Jehovah Reha. The Lord, our shepherd. Oh, I love this one. I love them all, but anyways. So, who is Christ in you? The Lord, your shepherd. So, who are you in Christ? The protected one. The shepherd will give his life for the sheep. Even leave them all to go get one, because one decided to... (laughs) Go squirrely. <laughs> There's some truth in that. <laughs> in Jeremiah 23, 6, we find Jehovah said canoe. And who is that? The Lord, our righteousness. So who is Christ in you? The Lord, your righteousness. And who are you in Christ? The righteous one. Oh, that's good. Wow, this is good. I mean, I only picked two, four, I only picked seven. There's a lot more names of God. Here's one more. In Ezekiel 48, 35, we find Jehovah Shammah, the Lord who is present. So, who is Christ in you? The Lord present. So who are you in Christ? The body of His righteous presence. Man, that's good stuff. 
2 Corinthians 4.13 says we have the same spirit of faith as the saints of old. We believe, therefore we speak. Speak in your faith just like we did releases what you believe. And Matthew 9.29 says, according to your faith, be it done unto you. When you believe these spiritual blessings and you confess it in faith, it will be done in this natural realm. It didn't say, according to your faith, so be it done unto you in the spirit realm. No, we already got it in the spirit realm. That's Ephesians 1.3. We got it all in the spirit realm. We need it in the, in the physical realm. By your faith confession, you take back the goods Adam and Eve lost in the fall. Philemon 6 says the communication of your faith becomes effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that's in you, in Christ Jesus. The communication of your faith. The confession of your faith becomes effectual. It becomes active. It becomes operative. It becomes power exercised, power released by the acknowledging, by the speaking of every good thing in you, in Christ. And the average believer, they won't declare who they are. And they wonder why preachers like me get all excited about this and you know, this ain't no big deal. You've got to open your mouth, honey child. <laughs> you know, when you got saved, what did you do? I went up to the front of the altar at 12, and I, I told the pastor, I want this Jesus you told me about. He said, follow me in the prayer. And he said, say this. He said, say, Father, and if I just did this, he would have said, Son, say Father. That's the average Christian right now. They're not confessing what He wants you to confess. You got saved by confessing Jesus as Lord. As you receive Christ Jesus, so walk in Him. Colossians 2.6 As you receive Him by confessing Him, Lord. How do you walk in Him? By confessing Him, Lord. By confessing everything His Lordship gives you. Well, how long do I do it? Calm down, modern day Pharisee. (laughs) Calm down. Let's go with grace, amen? This this, this ain't a mental thing. This this is a hard thing. Well, what if I confess it a thousand times and and nothing happens? It probably won't. Because that's how you started it. (laughs) Thank you, sweetheart. My wife said, get your head out of the way. It comes from your heart. If you confess Jesus as Lord with your, with your head, we need to pray for you. You did it with your heart. Amen? As you release your faith, you'll resist and reign over the devil and all his works. But you've got to release your faith. You've got to declare who you are in Christ. Philippians 4.19, My God shall supply all my need according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Well, praise the Lord, I'm in Christ Jesus. I'm where the riches in glory are. And I receive my need met because I'm in the right place where my need is met. So I take it now, right now, because I'm in Christ. I just spoke my faith. Amen. Just spoke my faith. Are y'all with me on that? My brother and I were talking the other day, and a mutual friend of ours been to churches like this for years, and we were talking about them. And he said, I never told you this, but he was brought up in the word message like we were brought up in, in the faith message. Now, when I say in the faith message, if you have a problem with that, you don't know the word. Romans 10.6 says the righteousness of faith speaks. Romans 10.8 says the righteousness of faith speaks the word of faith. We are brought up in the word of faith message. But uh, he said, he point blank looked at me and he said, 
I never confess stuff like that. And it's brought up in a church like this. Can you be that blind and that deceived? Yes. And you won't get anything that God wants you to have. Well, it's the same silly thing as saying, well, you know, I know, I know God knows my heart. And I know that when I die, that if it's His will, I'm going to heaven. Uh, uh, No, you're not. Well, how do I get there? If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe that God raised Him from the dead, you'll be saved. With the heart man believes into the righteousness with the mouth confessions made into salvation. I don't have to do all that. Well, then have a one hell of a time. Now and later. We're going to have one heaven of a time Amen. now and later. Amen. I'll depend on what you want. I want God's will in my life. Amen. And His will is heaven on earth. His will is for me to be the stronger man reigning in this life. And I'm going to believe it. And I'm going to declare it. I'm going to confess it. I'm going to be it in Christ. Y'all get anything out of that tonight? Praise God.